August, after graduating college, we and three individuals from around the country came to Yakima, Washington to live in an intentional community. We're all part of the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, in which we serve at different social service organizations and nonprofits in Yakima as full-time volunteers. I serve at Catholic Charities Housing Services, and James serves at Rod's House, which is a drop-in resource center for homeless youth. But serving in nonprofits isn't the only thing that we did this year. Part of being in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps is committing to the four values of Jesuit Volunteer Corps. Those are spirituality, simple living, make sure I don't forget all of them, uh, social and ecological justice, and the value we want to talk about tonight, which is community. So for us, community is not just about living with a, con a couple of other housemates. Instead, it's about forming lasting relationships, having shared experiences, and making group decisions. But healthy communities don't just happen. Healthy communities form when its participants are intentional about their actions. The definition of intention is a choice to act in a certain way. Being intentional can break habits and make people more aware of their actions. It can answer questions like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? How are you using your time? And what we found over this year is that when you're by yourself, those questions are really hard to hold yourself accountable to. <laughs> They're kind of like your New Year's resolution. They start in January and they end in February. Uh, or in my case, like January 2nd. <laughs> kind of like, yeah. Uh, but what we found over the past the course of this year is that by having community mates, you're to, working together to really answer these questions. And even knowing what an intentional community is, everyone comes in with different expectations of what it will be like or what they'll gain from the experience. I know I came into the year thinking we would all sit in a circle, hold hands, and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> I thought we would put everything we brought in the middle of the circle and divide it up that way. I have a twin sister, and we shared everything our whole life. So I thought, this year will be easy. I don't know how to share. <laughs> but it's the very things that she and I shared, like our photo books, memories, clothes, our sense of humor, the difficulty of being apart, that I wanted to hold on to, that I wasn't ready to share with my community. This didn't make for an easy transition. And I can speak to that, because when I came into community, I kind of expected everyone to have the same values, and I expected everyone to do everything that I wanted to do. <laughs> Whether that be volunteering at a homeless shelter, being at a community garden, or even making homemade deodorant. <laughs> do it. Don't do it. Are these all things that community is? Yes, but community can also be five people standing by a lake. It could also look like an inexpensive haircut as we tried to live simply. <laughs> it can also look like covering yourself with eight pounds of liquid chocolate to, make your, to win a competition. <laughs> but oftentimes, it looks like this. <laughs> what I didn't expect to gain from community is the level of emotional support. When I first started in living in an intentional community, I was very wrapped into myself. I didn't really want to share all of my emotional life with my community mates. And when I was working at Rod's house, I was experiencing a lot of very difficult stories with homeless youth, a lot of trauma and a lot of pain. And I didn't feel like anyone else could understand that. I wanted to keep my work life and my home life separate. So this kind of emotional backup culminated in the middle of the year when I was having a conversation with one of my friends. First, I started talking about my experience. And I started crying about my experience. And she asked me this really simple question. Have you told your community mates about this? And I, the answer was no. And I realized that I really needed to start sh opening up and sharing this with my community. I remember the day that you shared those emotions with us and how surprised I was because he had disguised it so well for so many months. An important part of intentional community is vulnerability. And I've been able to be my most vulnerable self this year because as a community, we've created the time and the space to do that. We've scheduled time during the week and created a safe and comfortable space in our house in order to have honest communication, share our opinions, be attentive to each other's needs, and make decisions together. Sometimes it meant carving a lot of time to do this. After Christmas, we spent an hour and a half discussing whether we should leave the Christmas decorations up or take them down. <laughs> From an outside perspective, this might seem pointless or a waste of time, or why didn't someone just make the decision for them? But for us, it was really important to use that time to practice active listening and ensure that everyone's needs were met. 
And I remember leaving that conversation feeling like it had been really tense, uncomfortable, and, and thinking maybe I had compromised too much. And this just goes to show that just because you live in an intentional community doesn't mean that everything's always going to go smoothly. There can be obstacles, and those can be big obstacles like making a house budget together, or they can be even small obstacles like figuring out who's leaving those peanut butter spoons in the bathroom. <laughs> but what we found during this year is that there are certain tools that we've learned that really help in sort of negotiating and facilitating these conflicts, and even sort of, I mean, mitigating them before they even happen. One of those most important tools is called the check-in. So check-ins can be really formal or check-ins can be really informal, but the basic idea behind one is that you and your community mates all come together and you ask each other a really simple question that we don't really get to ask each other a lot. How was your day? How was your week? Is there anything that made you sad? Is there anything that made you mad? What brought you great joy this week? And moving, oh yeah, and then moving together, uh, and by sort of sharing these experiences, what we realized is that we've created a space in order to celebrate our life as a community. And celebration was definitely necessary, because even with the tools and our honest communication, we were not successful in everything that we did. We were successful as a community, though, because we all had made the choice to commit ourselves to each other this year. We made the commitment to weekly meetings, community nights, and spirituality nights. We had the desire to be there, and we used these four steps that, to help facilitate group gatherings. First, I show up. I show up physically, but also mentally. Next, I'm attentive to what is meaningful. What is meaningful to myself, but also what is, a, what is meaningful to my community mates. I speak my own truth without judgment, because we're in the process of learning to trust each other. And lastly, I let go of the outcome, because what might seem like the most important issue at the moment is only a small part of the experience. So as of July 31st, our year as Jesuit volunteers ended, but our practice of living intentionally has not. This year has changed how we connect with others and create relationships. And sure, five strangers living in a house together intentionally might be a fantasy world, but the principles and idea of living intentionally can be applied to families living together, neighbors who want to become more aware of their actions and interactions, and other groups who want to build community. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? How am I spending my time? These are all questions that as individuals we have a hard time answering. But as a community, we've come together and moved a little bit closer. So we'd like to take this time to thank our community for bringing us together. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, James. <laughs> thank you, Francesca. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you all for sharing our experience.